What's up, all you hooligans? How you guys doing? Welcome to the show. It's the Neutral Zone. I got my crime partners out there, Danny D. Low and my Cuban. Yo, it's Wild on Two. And what our up, though? Guest today are John and Heather from the John and Heather Show, and I really love this show. I've been watching it, and well, at least when I get the damn notifications, because I hit that bell. And you know how YouTube is, but John and Heather got a really good format. I like how they come out, they talk, and then the next thing you know, boom, they do a video <laughs> in between interviewing all that good stuff. So I want to welcome them to the show. How hey, you buddy. doing, John and Heather? You're out of Miami, so you're you know right yeah. in there in the cuban section of uh town you said so what's Real up guys fun. hey 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 how are you hey how you doing we're doing we're doing at the show how you doing and i'm heather how's everybody doing out there first off i made a mistake i am from miami but we're not in, in miami. miami we're in citrus county about 90 miles north of tampa so right <laughs> we, which is a little bit farther from Miami. Right. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know where I used to live, John? Uh, you heard of Newport Ritchie? Oh, yeah. Yeah, we're not far from Newport Ritchie. Pasco County. If you guys know, you know. <laughs> we know Pasco County. <laughs> <laughs> we're familiar with Pasco County and all of the alleged things that go on. It's yeah, ain't, so ain't, that, ain't that Pasco County where that sheriff is that's always on everybody's nuts? Uh, no, that's Polk too. County. That's Polk County. Oh, that's he's Polk? A judge, yeah, he's at Polk. He's out of Orlando. No, Pasco County. If you want to see Pasco, go to Live PD. There you go. Wow. Uh, okay. Well, uh, Live John, PD. Uh, how, we work, how we work this usually is we go through uh, a round type of table deal. Uh, you know, I'll ask a question. <laughs> Carlos and Danny Delo ask. And, you know, we'll have some fun. My first question is, how did you guys get started? And, you know, where did you get your idea of how to format your show? Because you're doing something different than a lot of people do. Like I said, you start out by talking like where you are now, and then you throw a video in of you interviewing people. It is an awesome kind of format. Uh, yeah, well, part of our show is that we also work uh, with Born to Ride magazine. And with Born to Ride magazine, we get to go out on basically assignments. So let's say one was like to uh, Cherokee, North Carolina. We go to the internet. Yeah, and we go to Cherokee, North Carolina, and we'd see Biker uh, Chopper Town, interview the builders from Chopper Town, and then we'd go out on like an excursion. We'd go to Soco Falls, film the falls. That was I a lot there. of fun. With my go. camera strapped to me, filming these falls, have Heather going up there. And then her nickname, her ride name is Squirrel. So there she is scooting down there. We film this, edit it. And what we'll do is we'll talk about it. You know, we'll say, hey, we were here, it was a beautiful country, and we'll do a lead in into it, and then we'll play the video. And what's also good is like, since we're in conjunction also with Born to Ride magazine, um, like the uh, one of our other shows that we had on that you really enjoyed was when they had uh, Dale's Wheels Through Time Museum, the museum and everything uh, that all, all runs. We and, got to go through that. Yeah, we got to go through that. But Dale Walksler, who is the founder of the museum, passed away. And his son, Matt, took over the family business, which is the museum. And right. Everything. I mean, this guy had every single Harley you could think of from, like, the first originals concept, World War II models, everything you could think of. And Matt took it over. And we interviewed him. He kicked over 1914 Harley for us. Second star. Second but they kick. want to know how we met or how it got started. Oh, well, that's the <laughs> started on a bet. Oh, was that when we're at the chest? It got started on a bet. I'm sorry. She just that. like chi she just like China down, man. China down puts me in check, Jack. <laughs> you know, <laughs> we're, we're just gonna go on a tangent, right, Polly? Yeah, so he's a sticky glue that holds me together. <laughs> no, we were sitting out at a place that was called the Shed, and we we're just hanging out, and having a good time. And Heather's like, you know, I'm really into doing all of these pictures and stuff. Well, why do I do pictures? Okay, well, a little backstory on Heather. Heather was in a very serious car accident back in 2010 and wound up getting a closed head injury and traumatic brain damage from it, which she had short-term memory loss. So when we met, 
I take a lot of photos. photos. Everything. And I love so, taking my photos. Yes. So I was wondering, like, why are you taking so many photos and all this stuff? What's the stuff? matter with Almost me? Almost documenting it, putting it out on Facebook. And one day I found you sitting in the bedroom and you were crying. Right? And I woke up to her and I said, honey, what's wrong with you? And she goes, John, tell us about our first date. And that's when I put the two and two together that she had the short-term memory loss. And we went through the pictures that she took of our first date, right about the time of our first date. And it jogged her memory. And then that passion led to talking Thanks. to people. And we love riding. And we love, we have the gift of gab. We love talking to people. So. I like to talk shit. Yeah, exactly. So what we did is like, <laughs> talk really, shit. Uh, yeah. Where's yeah. Jesse? <laughs> you're in a right you're in a right place <laughs> i'm gonna get in trouble she, as we speak she's getting a an ass tattoo somewhere so she's i know she's watching because she just texted me stop looking at my phone i'm so, getting my right tattoo tomorrow yeah. i like her i like her already <laughs> no, exactly. my girl Jess. go ahead wild on to no i wanted to i mean obviously in florida the right i mean you can write all year long and people oh. don't understand when people say about you do see people with flip-flop shorts tank tops riding motorcycles all the time and people don't understand that how florida but what's your favorite like uh event in florida itself uh other than like bike week in daytona or something what do you like to do or travel to i don't know how south you go uh in florida <coughs> what's up fho go ahead we've gone like um south of brandon and um what's what what's south of brandon that's um Oh, give me a give me a hand here, guys. What's we'll go. Florida? We'll go anywhere in Florida. Yeah. We'll, we'll our boundaries. We don't have any Florida. Really, we'll we have, go just about anywhere. Yeah, because we have the toy hauler now too. Yeah, we have a nice toy hauler. How big is our toy hauler? Yeah, twenty five foot THX toy hauler. Um, it's wonderful. We love the damn thing because we take the Harley with us. When we went to North Carolina, we brought it with us. We could ride the mountain. Right. So back. we go. Where was uh Charlotte's web? Charlotte. Oh. Wow, oh, geez, Walla Hula, yeah, Walla Hula, Walla Hula. Walla Hula. Okay, yeah. yeah, okay, that's it. We've been there. Um, that's about as far south as we've been. Yeah, that's pretty far out there. That's out in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. Um, we, it's a great, it's a great destination, though, man. The middle of nowhere, man. This it's a great biker place. Constantly. Yeah, there's a lot of great biker bars in Florida. Little put on places in Florida, in between. I mean, the dangerous routes is US 19, obviously. Yeah, Riding. I mean, uh, I, I like going through US 19 because you go off the beach area. So then I'll go to Clearwater, St. Pete, Sarasota, go all the way down Fort Myers. Mm -hmm. uh, then I'll hit to the central Florida Lakeland area and go north. Uh, but one but... Thing, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, no. You go ahead. We don't ride with chain clientas <laughs> <laughs> and flip flops and and shorts. We ride. <laughs> we ride. We ride. That's what Danny Velo does. You know what it is? I'm sitting here, Danny, saying, you know what? We must be in a weird Twilight Zone stuff. You know, <laughs> the Florida people, they crazy, man. They wearing flip-flops and stuff. It, it, that's craziness. No, oh, yeah. no. Uh, Each time I visit, I go back and visit. I, I actually see everybody, like, a bunch of people in flip-flop tank tops. They do. Like, they, they wear do. They really do. <laughs> they wear flip flops. You're absolutely well, right. Kids on the sport bikes are even worse, man. They'll have like a white feeder shirt on and shorts and, and almost barefoot. You know, oh, like, yeah. like sandals or barefoot, 100 miles an hour. Oh, we'll we'll see them ride right by now. in a bikini top or, yeah. or something like what I'm wearing right now <laughs> instead of with a cut on, you know, or at you least. Know, who the hell you could do well, I, I am kind of guilty of riding with a bikini on a couple times. I, I'll wear a oh. dick. <laughs> that's gonna be on the calendar now man we're gonna put a calendar to that. we should all get on a bike for the by the way it. we got uh china down in the house we have to wish everybody's a happy mother's day uh heather you too uh Thank shocker you. all you is happy mother's day uh you guys put up what's up party. china doll happy mother's day china <laughs> We got Heather but on, I, China, man. She's just like you. She giving, uh, she's checking John, man. She checks him. Uh, I love that stuff. <laughs> you can uh, tell they've been together for a while. <laughs> right. So what's up, Danny? What you got? Uh, how long you guys been like? You know what? What got what got you like inspired to to be bikers to to ride your bikes and 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 do everything? Like, what inspired both of you to to just do it? We just love, I've been riding my whole life. I, the first bike I had was yeah. seven years old. 
and I've always had, I've always been comfortable on two wheels. And same thing with Heather, she's always been comfortable on two wheels. And I never really found a riding, I mean, I've been married before and my wife rode with me, but it's never has been the same with Heather. Heather and me just on the bike, it's just like we're two puzzle pieces. We fit, you know, on right. the bike. and we just ride really well. And when we're riding, she does a lot of the road footage. I do the GoPro, the GoPro and road footage. I'm able to move and I'm pretty limber. So <laughs> I've been riding all my life too. I used to race. Yeah, I heard the okay. limber. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> ah, limber. Her, her, her legs are wrapped <laughs> around. Coming on. <laughs> I used to race enduros when I was younger. I went horse for my dad. I, I used to ride horses and I used to race enduros for my dad. Okay. And um, I was the only girl that raced on the track. I, I loved it because I would put those boys to shame. <laughs> I bet you did. Yeah, I did. <laughs> So Rob, I uh, <laughs> Rob Benjamin asked you guys, uh, John and Heather, what was your best rally you've ever been to? Probably when we got married, you think? Well, no, I mean, Cherokee. Cherokee was a cool rally because when we were in Cherokee, North Carolina, the scenery there was so beautiful, beautiful. you couldn't even take a bad picture, you know. And you're way up in the mountains, and we went right in the mountains. We actually went with the uh, Cherokee Chief. Yeah, they rode up the mountains with him. And, oh my god! Oh, and, and the, they just took off like a bad eye yeah, and, and left us. Them. Oh my god! It's like three hundred feet down this cliff. And we never down. rode in the mountains Ooh, before. I got a big thousand pound bagger. <laughs> <laughs> trying to keep up, got up there, <laughs> made it, took my pictures, this and we're riding behind, them. trying to keep up with them. <laughs> but we like. <laughs> We don't care. We just love the ride. We're able to take her pat. And I started getting into taking pictures when she was, you know, asking, can you take pictures of this, this, and that because of her memory loss. And we just started putting everything together. I really got into taking pictures and loved it. She got into video editing and she really loved that. We're all self taught. And it just happened to be something that grew. And then we met Ron Gillette from Born to Ride Magazine. And he took us under his wing. Exactly. And really showed me how to take pictures of motorcycles, how to um, you know, take a picture of something so it's a sexy shot, not a blank footage or anything like that. You want one of those shots in a magazine that pop. And he's been doing it for 25 years, you know, 26 years, you know. And I just had to, you know, it teaches me a lot. The to top of it all off, he used to be in a 1980s thrash band named Mass and Savage. Wait, towards you, you got to go to our YouTube. I can't even explain this band. He like invented thrash. <laughs> And smashes TVs over his head and bleeds everywhere. It's it's like a cross between Ric Flair from wrestling and like a grunge band. But it's, it's really <laughs> we get to go on stage and tape that's something else that nobody gets a chance to do because you know, yeah, they're the rock stars from the 80s. So, you know, just putting all the stuff together that we love and being able to put it out there for other people to enjoy. Because so I remember when my YouTube channel hit 5,000 too, man. I was. I was super happy about that too. You know? All right. Yeah. Yeah. Freaking thrilled, yeah. man. We never thought it was going to happen. Yeah. Right now, we're just right. We're at six. We're getting close to seven. Yeah, you know, we're getting close to seven. And we're, we never on. thought that would happen. It's continually. Yeah. Going. And yeah, so anybody sorry. in the, in the comment section, if you guys are not following, so I just subscribed. I was just looking right now and I made sure I subscribed to their channel. Go subscribe to their channel. Check them out. Like said, independent, you. yeah, independent bikers. I mean, it's a, they're a big group, and what they're showing is actually what the you know day in the life of a regular biker is. Uh, oh, yeah. We're not talking about yeah. MC, so that's uh, awesome to watch. I'm obviously irregular. I'm I'm wishing I was them. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I'm listening to all this stuff they're talking about. I'm like, man, you guys are living life, man. Right on. <laughs> well, I'm surprised you guys being from Florida that Daytona ain't uh, big on the list. And Real it, bikers don't go there. <laughs> See, it, it, it's sloppy. It I is. mean, the, it is. We're also the house. It's of it's amateur week. <laughs> Was it Danny? I said it's amateur week. Yeah, I know. And Main Street, and man, sometimes the place gets just too drunk for me. That's the only. Yeah. Way That's yeah. another thing. Yeah. About yeah, we don't drink. And no Me neither. That's awesome. Anybody that does, no yeah. offense to anyone that does. More power to you. Oh, I try to offend them all the time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I, only I actually one. so this weekend I, I just offended thought. two people that I just met. Uh, I was out with a brother of mine, and it was his mother-in-law 
and her boyfriend. And they're like, yeah, we want to go for a ride. And I'm like, all right, cool. So I meet them up at this bar. We're having dinner, you know, lunch or whatever. <clears throat> and I'm like, well, I need gas. So I'm like, so let's go hit the quick trip up here, you know, fill up, and then we'll take off. And they wanted me to, to lead, you know, because I know all the back roads in my area. And I'm like, all right, cool. We have no problem. We get the quick trip, which is literally, I think it's like maybe not even 10 minutes away from where we just left. We get to the bar. We fill up. And my boy's like, all right, cool. So you want to go here and there? And I'm like, yeah, man, we'll back road it over there, you know, for the day or whatever. And then these people are like, well, we want to go to this bar that's like literally about 15 minutes away. And I'm like, we just left the bar. Why do you want to go back to a bar again? You know what I'm saying? And, oh, well, you know, we, we, we like to go to the, the different bars. And I'm like, oh, okay. So you guys are drunks. I'm like, yeah, I don't ride with drunks. I'm like, have a nice day. I literally just walked over, got on my bike and left my boy sitting there. I was like, I don't ride with drunks. Sorry. I, I'm a biker. I ride my motorcycle. I don't go bar hopping. Yeah. And, the weirdest and it's hard to find people like us. Like, it's hard to find people that dislike to go ride. Like, don't get me wrong. I don't need to ride a, a hundred miles and then get off my bike. Like I can ride 20, 30 miles, get off, hang out, shoot the shit. You know what I mean? Like, you know, it's all about just having fun and enjoying the scenery, but I, I'm I'm not going to bars like you know every couple minutes you know I'm like no well, it's not my thing. There's other things to see besides bars. That's how I look. Yes, at it. exactly. No, I mean don't get me wrong. You know, you stop at a bar, you grab a burger, or grab some lunch, you know, grab dinner, even whatever. You yeah. know, that's cool. You know what I mean? But I'm a gas station mutt, man. I'm always at a gas station, sitting there, sitting there, you know, just people watching, having something to drink, and a, and a couple of smokes. We yeah, like well, in like yeah, in too. Texas, we have all the barbecue places that we just oh, travel yeah. to. Uh, Jesse and I and some guys, uh, we just ride to. It can be an hour, 30 minutes, 45 minutes each way, two hours. We'll just ride, go to barbecue place, sit outside. There you go. Talk and go through the hill country, hit some twists, and come back. Yeah. We go out to the yeah. yeah we That's what it's about. It's about riding your motorcycle, man. Yeah, oh, Yeah. Know. Most and you can, and you can, t I mean, literally you can tell by, I get people from, obviously they email me from YouTube and they want to ride with me. And then I start riding and you can tell they don't put time on the bike when, you know, they're trying to keep up and take, <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not even trying to hop that. Yeah. Up. I'm trying to be safe when I ride with other people, but you can tell they're a little white knuckling. Right. They're not. Yeah. Hey, John, uh, and yeah. other, do you get a lot of people yeah. that, uh, when you're out and about want to ride with you? Yes, we do. And I ride with everybody I find. I, I really, as long as it's going in my direction, I have no problems with it at all. And they're safe. As long I, as they're safe. Yeah. I mean, like, if, if I know them, I can always see them swerving all over the place. I'm then not, we're not I'm riding. Not doing, you know, I, I may get in front, you know, and have Heather keep an eye on him from behind, make sure he's going to be safe. I've done right. that. Before. I've had a couple of my friends that sometimes they'll listen to me sometimes. I say, you know, you can switch over and drink some water, sit your ass down for an hour or two, man. Then maybe you can go ahead and, uh, Right. You know, I've done, I've that. done that a lot. But I'll, I'll ride with just about anybody. I, I, I don't care, you know. And depending on the skill level, will be depending on how close I'm getting, you know, to them. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And I ride. <coughs> and and it's not even it's not even the drinking is though when you ride long distances and a lot of people don't know they don't want to stop. They're dehydrated. Uh, they're almost passing out on that bike or so, and they're just not even thinking clearly. Mm -hmm. Well. I'm kind of picky on who I ride with. Like, I like, so, you know, I like riding, you know, I guess you would call it club style or whatever, but, you know, side by side. That's just the way I was brought up. That's the way I'm comfortable riding. Um, I'm not a big staggered fan, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm real, I'm real cautious on who I allow next to me. <laughs> like, yeah, when you pull you side know. by side, you got to be careful when you ride. Yeah. Like, yeah. You, you got to make sure that that person bottles. has been here before, you know. <laughs> Yeah, when you're a good one, you want to know the best riding. What was that, Carlos? No, okay. just the potholes. That, like when you like, I ride side by side, but so the person needs to know how to ride side by side when there's a pothole that they see the pothole and Dude, get in the face. <laughs> I got a story about a pothole. So I was rolling down a highway and I was with a good brother of mine and Hollywood's uh Red. And me and Red have rode many miles together. Okay, we've got thousands of miles together, so you know, we ride side by side where, you know, our knees are touching. That doesn't, it doesn't bother us. So we're going down a highway and we're doing about, we're clipping good, like about 80, 90 miles an hour. We're moving, we're on our way somewhere. And we had a couple guys behind us and dude, I see a pothole in front of us 
And I don't know why, but for some reason, this felt safer to go left than right from the pothole because of where it was located in the road. So I went left. I leaned left a little bit, you know, just to get away from it. And literally my hand and my brother's hand, we were touching like holding hands, man. Like our throttles were together and we're doing 90, you know, between 80 and 90, like we're moving. And, you know, I moved over, you know, we hit, we both kind of hit each other a little bit. I looked over at him. He looked over at me. It was no big deal. Then I just moved back around and we just kept going, you know, like that's, that's, that's what you need to be, you know, need next to you. You know, that's why I'm, I'm real picky because anybody else, if you did that now, they're going to swerve next thing you know, you're all over the highway. You know what I mean? And let me tell you something. When I, when I went past that pothole, I saw a Chinaman looking up at me. That's how deep this thing was, man. It was crazy. Oh, oh. Where like, I wouldn't. Get- where do you get your ideas, uh, John and Heather, for your shows? Because you do a lot of good interviews and videos uh, of those interviews in the middle of your show. How do you set that up? Um, what we'll do is, let's say we have like a new interview that we did, like um, when we went on the CARES run, you know, for uh, to bring awareness to abused children. Yeah, that came in. And we went ahead and we filmed that and we um, put that out. It just... We love doing charity. What it is, we love doing charity. We love interviewing people that do charity. We love going on rides. And that also happened to be the same time as the same time as the uh, Abused Children's Awareness Month. So yeah. it, it coincided. So we wrapped our show around it. We did our show leading into it, talking about the run, talking about, you know, uh, Ninja and Guard Dog and the founders of the organization. And then we would lead into the video that we did of the ride footage and some of the people that were there, pictures, and you know, we had a full escorted ride, so the cop parade and everything that, that did it, you know. And that was the like, first time we got to ride behind the police oh and God. actually be oh. four feet behind police and yeah. not go to jail. Yeah, it was yeah. great. <laughs> no crowd behind the cops, man. Three biker cops, one, two, and three. And I had to ride right there in the corner between all the biker cops. And these guys don't fuck around, man. I like, <laughs> these guys. Literally, like you know, like the hell, like the um, the blue angels will do that pattern, and you can see like the uh, stars in the sky. These guys were like that, you know, they like, could ride. dude. Those those biker cops, man, know. they they got they skills, know. man. Oh, they put in the time, man. They they don't, mm-hmm. yeah, no, they put in time. They can literally really outride most people. I gave them props after watching how well yeah, they, they really can, man. I mean, like you know, we've all gone to a Harley dealer and we see, you know, where they got the cones and they got you know some cop out there going around and. Dude, you yeah. watch him, man, and it's like, damn, it's like that dude, that dude knows his stuff, you know? That's One terrible. time I would like to be a, a jerk and, and walk up to him and be like, all right, that's cool. You did that on that bike. Now get on my bike and show me to do it. Do that on my bike. Like, like let's just see if it's like a special setup or something. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, <laughs> like just they're, to, they're just the best wings, with them. You know? Yeah, I've seen them. No, they're not gold wings. They're Harleys. No, well, I mean, up no, here they, anyway. I don't know. Yeah, so up, up here, here they have, they have a lot of gold wings, Hondas. Um, man, I don't oh, know. do they? Harley. Yeah, yeah, because they have all Harleys out here. Crystal Harley, like gave most of the Harley. Yeah, that's yeah. that same way out here too. They got all Harleys. Most of the retired ones are the instructors, and a lot of these uh, advanced uh, bike riding. I know that. I've seen the I wonder, you know, is there is there like a a police course that like yeah, we could do. take? Because that would be cool to yeah. do. There I've is. Seen it oh, there is. 150 bucks so you can take the police course only thing though uh, my bike i spent a lot of time and money on my bike and i don't want to go to a slow speed close to us on a bike that I <laughs> smash. But if they're gonna give me their bike to ride I'm more than happy to i'll take the class <laughs> I <ain't doing> <laughs> I, I mean, uh, yeah, I'm kind of the same way with that. I got a lot of money in my bike too, and I'm like, yeah, if I crash it, I'm, you know, it's gonna be an hour and a half of me crying and sobbing and <laughs> kicking shit. I'm gonna kick every cone on that parking lot, like, but it's gonna be a I mean, situation. I got my guards you know? and uh, I got my guards, and there's a guy in Texas that sells these little guards that they. I mean, because I scrape my bike all the time. I I've got a 2020 Road Glide and I, um, Limited. I, I mean, I scrape it, I drop it because I practice. I mess around. I do donuts on it and um, to practice. Well, you're just that. not a good rider. That's why you drop it all the time. Oh, be yeah, honest. Yeah, that's why. <laughs> <laughs> if, you, hey, if you don't challenge yourself and you don't drop your bikes, then you're not really challenging, man. You know what? You're right. You are right away. P- P- people will give up with. I mean, like when you do donuts really tight and uh, just start spinning, you can stand on the, you know, on your kick on the on the side. 
and just kind of just keep circling around. But that's why I placed a little, um, I forgot what they're called. I bought them. Uh, they weren't too expensive and you just put them on the side. So they, that's what scrapes uh, the bottom. So you've been uh -huh. doing tricks on your bike? The what? On the road glide, you're doing tricks on that? Well, not big tricks, but I, I mean, I'll be going side to side around the cones. I'll <coughs> scrape going like, just going in circles and stuff around cones and. What a big trick is, uh, what is it, a clutch and, and your rear brake? Yeah. yeah. No, just, uh, just uh, and then uh, to practice with the friction zone, like basically just stop and just move very slowly. I can really do that really well, uh, especially uh. in traffic areas. Okay, yeah. I got to ask, why are you morons <laughs> doing tricks on your freaking baggers? It's we not have. tricks, man. It's when you go in the parking lot, you know how to maneuver around. Idiots. Because That's we it. can. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's their toys. And see, yeah. wait a minute, wait a minute. I'm not doing tricks on my bagger. I ride my bagger. I don't. I, I don't have no situations in life where I have to do a donut in the middle of the road. So. Oh, I do. <laughs> <laughs> I got to turn around you, right you now. Know, you ain't no fun. <laughs> do you have <laughs> biker games up there? Yeah, because they're all down here. Slow do you, speed races, weenie bikes. All do that you stuff. have biker games up there like that? We, no, they're, they're in, uh, in parts of Texas, they do have they have the little mini bike uh, dirt tracks. Um, yeah, they have I like little. Have. Yeah, mini bike misfits. Mini but, bike misfits. On your oh, own we're, we're here on in the Midwest. Bike. We have nothing cool. <laughs> like there really ain't nothing Just fun you. like that. You're cool. All. So you don't no, know, women I'm not ain't cool either. Cool up here. <laughs> Our women ain't even cool like you guys. But I guess no, uh, no, know, they're not. I guess this is a Florida thing or something where you, you know, or either that or Marlins fans who want to trick out bikes and stuff. Goddamn right. Look, Juanito. You know what it is? It's all the places where the weather is warm all year round. We live in a suck ass area, man. We get four months if we're lucky to enjoy our lives and have fun. The rest of the year, it's, it's just go to sleep and hope you wake up in spring. Yeah, winter for us is just a little chilly and it's not. How you guys? How you doing, Commander? Uh, uh, arms in the house. Uh, one thing that we were talking about, John and Heather, uh, before we came on, uh, I got a grandson that uh, I deal with with <coughs> spina bifida and stuff, and we were talking about how special needs kids they really do take on life, man, and they do it with a smile. They're not like most of us who would, uh, you know, complain, cry, moan they take it on and i like to get your story on that well uh, yeah it's close to home for us because we have a daughter with down syndrome and i'm a retired special needs teacher so for me it's just it's it's a way of life yeah and kayla is just so special I mean, right. kayla has downs and she's just a beautiful person through and through. She's 26 I mean, now. And yes. It's just been an exciting 26 years. Yeah, I mean, she li lives an independent living. She's very comfortable that way. She has a job. She has her own money. Uh, matter of fact, they're all going to get a tattoo together for Mother's Day. Yes, Kayla's 26, and she has a tattoo. And it's her second a tattoo. A badass tattoo, as she puts it. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, that's right. Her first <laughs> tattoo was uh, Hello Kitty. In, in her arm. heart, and she got that on her arm, and we were hoping that nice. Was, and we we're you know, we we're just making sure she can handle herself. She can handle it like a trooper, man. Yeah, and and for <laughs> you know, here we live in a small small rural town. We have a center called the Key Facility, mm -hmm. and that's a special needs key facility, training center, key, yeah. key training center. Um, we also okay. have the like Mountain for the disabled. Yeah, we have Moving Mountains, which is where Kayla, our daughter, goes. Mm -hmm. And um, these facilities really help children or adults now yes. that have transferred over into adult facilities and adult living mm -hmm. where they can live on their own, like our daughter, yes. but have help at the same time because, you know, she's always going to need help. A little bit of help, oh, yeah. You know, right. She'll still always need that's, help. that's really, that's awesome, man. That's really awesome. And we take her everywhere. Just like tomorrow, they're going to get their um, family tats. They're all going to get butterflies on their <coughs> Well, special, special tattoos. Special yeah. tattoos. Nice. Yeah. yeah and for us, we think, you know, as, as, as bikers and as people, we just think that it's a way of life. And if, be happy. You know, these children look at life 
and they don't analyze life. They don't. They don't have a way of analyzing life like we do. Nope. Just so, happy to be there. yeah, exactly. right. Happy to be there. Happy to be in the moment. They keep it. They keep it really simple. Uh, I have a story of a kid uh, with special needs, and he went to I think it was Disney World, and they put him in that you know the glass thing with all these flying money that they have to catch, and they said, mm -hmm. "Oh, you got the most you catch um, in thirty seconds." You know, within the it, I forgot what the deal was that they won. Right. So the kid just stood there and the 30 seconds are going and then 30 seconds are over and it all piled on the ground. He picked it all up from the ground and just walked <laughs> out. Yeah. And they, nice. Everybody was just thinking like literally he out really Smart. fought everybody because he just waited. <laughs> he goes, it's kind of crazy to grab it in the air and he just let it all fall when it, the air stopped. And picked it up off the ground. <laughs> so of course, you know they let him win, but uh, they they keep it simple. I actually was a special needs teacher, also. Um, I helped out a severe emotional disorder kids more after that. Uh, okay. Kids that were troubled youth and um, were skipping school, fighting gangs. So I helped uh, out with that. So that was, it's tough. Uh, it it's really tough. tough. Uh, they have. I their did own a little bit of that too. They all have their own, you know, their own plan. Yeah. Uh, right. But, but they keep it serious and straightforward, and they all need somebody to just be there for them. Yeah. You know what? It's, I guess this is a question for everybody. It seems like bikers, motorcycle enthusiasts, they care more for special needs. They're more involved than the regular citizenry. Why do you think that is? John and Heather, you first. Well, bikers are very family-oriented. Whether your family is your MC or your family is your family. And when we yep. see a small child that's being beat up or a disabled child, it really hit, hits us in the heart because it hits us at home because we're very family oriented. Your other people out here that work right. at night, five, they give you liberals or whatever, they don't care. They do their job, they, they pay their charity, that's where their money goes. They don't get involved. We need, bikers like to get involved, anything for a good ride. You know, really, if that good ride involves right. the money, bring in a toy, you know, that's what we like to do. Yeah. Nope. Very well. I so. agree. Mm -hmm. I definitely think, agree. Well, why do you I think mean, it's us as a community that really gets uh, involved? To be honest, I think it, it, overall, as a biker community, not MC related, as a biker community, it's all what, when I mean all walks of lives, so many people are different. I don't care what job, where you're from have money, no money, uh, have bikes that ride and travel around and meet people. And when you're around different types of people, you can kind of see the best in everybody and uh, you resonate with more people. So when you see someone special needs or anything, I mean, you're just, they're just like they said, part of the family as a biker community. And I think we're out in public more. Most people, they don't, they stay in their houses or stay in their cars. And where we're, we like the surroundings. We like being with the wind in our face. Not my hair, but I think it's more that we kind of are, even though they're introverts to a point, bikers are, we're really social in general. We like gatherings. We like being together, uh, barbecues, uh, dinners, uh, outings, picnics. I think we're just used to being a family oriented uh, group in general. Mm -hmm. Danny. I mean, like John said, man, you know, we're uh, and Carlos, you know, we're we're family oriented people, but what people don't get is we got huge hearts, man, you know, and and we're very passionate about riding, we're passionate about our brotherhood, whether it be club or not, and and we just we just have that heart, man, and we're we're natural protectors, you know, we want to protect children, we want to protect women, we want to protect our brothers. You know, and, and that's just, it's just who we are, man. It's like, you don't know it's ingrained into you until you, one day you wake up and realize this is you, yeah. you know, whether it's been instilled into you or not, you know, it's just part of us. I don't know if it just naturally comes with just riding with good bros and, you know, I don't know what, I, I can't explain that part of it, but, but like I said, I mean, we're just natural protectors and, and we're natural, just passionate people, man, you know? And like well, John right. said, I mean, anything for a good ride, <laughs> you know. Uh, Willie Z, PZ, Heather and John, so supportive. My daughter was born with CDH. Uh, need more people like this. And Tiger Ward has a question. How long has John and Heather been together? 
Six years. Six years married to one. Rock on, man. Really? I would have thought you guys were together for like 20, 30 years, man. We were a blind date. We were a blind, <laughs> blind date. Yeah, my, she had a little bit of rough. My, my second wife, one of the reasons why I don't drink is because my second wife died of alcoholism. So I was in a rut. Okay. Friend of mine that owned a store, and I was, it was like, it's time for you to go out with me. I was like, all right. I go, do you have a friend? You know, I didn't know anybody. And she goes, can you handle crazy? That night we talked on the phone for four hours straight. Longer. It was yeah. longer. And then the next day we met up and actually met each other, and we haven't been apart since. Oh, that's yeah. an that's awesome, awesome man. man. You know, I wish I had friends cool. like that. Yeah, <laughs> you wish you just had friends. <laughs> oh, I got a lot of fr I got a lot of friends, no, but, I mean, but they're I all married. Of, and, I have a lot of, have a lot of acquaintances. Fun. I have a lot of acquaintances, just a few friends that I trust. That's it. Right. <clears throat> I'm actually, you know, I'm not gonna lie, man. I'm very blessed with a lot of friends. Like I've got, you know, I've got some biker brothers and friends, you know, and I got guys that. I call them squares. Like they don't ride. They're not about the biker lifestyle or nothing, but they love me and I love them. Like I've, I've been really, really blessed with good friends in my life and a lot of them too. Not like, not just like one or two, like, like Carlos. Hey, one or two is fine, man. That's all I can. <laughs> that's all. I'm happy. Yeah, one or if two they're real. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't if matter. Real, I'm happy. I'd rather have four yep. quarters than a hundred pennies, man. Exactly. Right. Going back to that one question, I think, and I don't know, I know it is for me anyway, but even when we were going through school, we're the ones who really stood up for the ones that were getting bullied. You know, we wouldn't let it happen. We had a conscious and it just grew from there into when we started writing, it was a natural thing. You know, I don't, what do you, I, phew. I think I mean, that's what I, everybody. I, I mean, I don't know if it was just from bikers in the pack back in the day that just fought for rights, and most people fight for their amendments and uh, just fight for different reasons in general, right? From fist fights to regular fights. Uh, I mean, I'm the type of guy that'll stop the bike if I see a bunch of ducks crossing the road to stop all the cars. That's the, that's me. You know, I'm one of those guys. I'll save a damn mm -hmm. pasta. You know, I'm just that's the I type of guy. Maybe do for a gopher tortoise. <laughs> Down here in Florida, the gopher tortoises are like an endangered tortoise. And I'm riding along, like, stop, screaming in my ear. I'm pulling over the side. <laughs> oh, trying to get across the street. She's not hey, those to turtles will freaking kill you, too, man. Shit. And if you don't want to touch it, she's kind of shooting it with her foot. It, <laughs> it would was walk a snapper turtle. Yeah, it would walk a little bit and sit down. Like, keep going. Uh, my, yeah, that's my wife. No, but I'm, I remember <laughs> in junior high. I remember in junior high, I was in seventh grade. I took on a ninth grader who was bullying a seventh grader in, in the locker room. That's where one of my first fights, I remember the first fights I ever got into was against a ninth grader. And I squared her out. I remember mm -hmm. that because she was bullying another seventh grader. And that was the end of that seventh grade school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <All right. laughs> that was the end uh of the Yep. Mark, uh, he he said it true right there, man. You will find out your true friends when you're in a jam, jail, or in need. Yep. Very yep. well. Amen to that. And I've I've been all three. Haven't we all? That's <laughs> now. Do you do you write for the magazine, John and Heather, or do you do our you know columns? You know, we don't write for the magazine. We do a lot for the media end of it. Uh, when it comes to um, when they're doing their still weekly show or on uh, Biker, was it Wonder Ride TV on Sunday nights, uh -huh. 11 o'clock. And they have their own uh, TV multimedia. So I do a lot of photography for the multimedia and a lot of the cinematography for that, too. And the interviews. We do and the interviews. interviews. And then either ourselves, we go ahead, we take it, we put everything together and edit it for our show or for Born to Ride. And or, we help with Or Born to Ride will do it and they'll send it to us or, you know, fix up whatever we did, you know, and then we'll air it together, you know, and we, we talk about it. And since we did the interview, we know all about it and what happened. And then we go to the actual events themselves that yes. represent Born to Ride. Right out there. So, like, we're going to Tallahassee this week yeah, and we're representing... Right 
um, we're to ride for rally and tally. Mm -hmm. and then, so we're going to go to rally and tally. And then October and November, we're going to be on the high seas rally, the cruise. Yes. Thank you, Ron Deletti and yes. Debbie Deletti. They, gave us, oh my God, they gave us the their cabin rally. for nice. our anniversary. 3,000 bikers on board of Royal Caribbean with free booze. And we don't drink. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that I, sounds I, like a good part. I always say I just drank once. I just never stopped. You know, that's, <laughs> I, I'm very you're responsible. Not, you're not a quitter like us. While I, I should, you know what? I should probably correct myself. I can't say that I don't drink. Like you know, I have a couple of beers here and there sometimes, but it's it's kind of rare. It's usually like maybe two or three times a year, if that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but, I, I'm a, I mean, I drink socially, but depends if uh, Jess and I are together, and I let her drink. I, I won't. I'll borrow just have a couple of drinks just i would i'm not going to be both of us drunk or anything at all because i'm always feeling protective in general well yeah uh, you got to watch her all the time no shit. <laughs> i do i do you know, i know you do bro i've been her. out of phone with you before <laughs> no no with, hey seriously with jess i just literally sit down and let her she's a social butterfly she'll go around the whole bar talk to people <laughs> bring them over she'll know everybody's history their child's names uh <laughs> know everything uh, and then people say, oh, you just don't go around falling. I was like, nope, she'll come back. I just, I'll, I'll get tired. <laughs> you know, I'll, I'll be She tired always comes her. back. <laughs> always. You know what? That's an interesting question for you, John and Heather. More uh, so for John. Okay. We know how things work on a motorcycle. It's dangerous and stuff like that. Do you ever get overprotective or protective of Heather when she's on that bike with you because anything can happen. And this is especially true uh, with people that have kids. Do you worry? Yeah, I do because um, Heather, the tendency, you know, from the motion of the motorcycle and everything, you know, it could be a late night or whatever. And we're riding home and all of a sudden I can feel her head. <laughs> and what I do is I'll, I'll grab her and I'll grab her leg, you know, and I'll wake her up to, oh, oh, well, that's my room, kiss my back, I'm awake, I'm awake, I'm awake. And that's when I really feel protective of her on the motorcycle. But besides that, she, on a, on a bike, my God, did she. You get mad if somebody comes close to us. Yes, I don't like somebody coming close to us. And they're, you know, when they're really acting a fool on the, in the car, you know, and I'm on the bike, you really can't yeah. do a lot of that. <laughs> no, I get, I know, yeah, I get mad, you know. But, you know, it's just. She's so good on the bike. I really don't have to worry too much about it on the bike, unless it's a really late night and she falls asleep. But besides that, <laughs> that's why her nickname is Squirrel. I mean, literally, she can all over the bike with the GoPro and everything and this and that. And I can ride. I'll be doing 55, 60. Yeah, she has GoPro and this, going around, doing that. That's why she's <laughs> We went down, like, from North Carolina. We went to the falls. I'm videoing how beautiful the falls are. I look down. She's all the way at the bottom. Picking up rocks out of the damn river where it's falling down the fall. <laughs> mountain climbing equipment that's been hanging out for like 10 years back there. I'm like, oh my God, please just make it up a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever get worried? So Carlo? doing your doing your videos, Dave and, and Heather, um oh, what you mom. know, like was it John's idea or was it her idea or was it both your ideas? Actually it was her like her what idea. what like like he was, was it like, okay. Like he was saying, you know, with his, his wife will be the social butterfly and stuff like that. The problem is my wife will come running over to me, make me grab my camera, make me grab my microphone, and I go running over and do anything. <laughs> uh, like the guy we met that with a 2000 nice. tri glide and I kicked over 100,000 miles on his birthday and stopped the bike in the middle of the highway to take a picture. Yeah, well, that was a great shot. <laughs> you got to get a shot at that. Nice. I had to go ahead and Yeah, it. yeah, you got to. Exactly. You got to get in moments like that. You got to capture. Yes. That's that's the one thing that yeah. we like to do too. You know, some hey, Hollywood. Uh, I think it, on my camera. No, I was gonna say, Hollywood. I think you're. I'm, I'm hoping that I'm hoping to take mine uh, this year. What was that? I'm sorry. Hey, Go ahead, Carlos. No, you were saying what? Do I get protective on the bike with Jess on? Yeah. Do you get protective with Jess on the bike? Because I know damn well when China gets on, and I think it's more because of the kids. If something happens to me, that's fine. Yeah. But you don't want her going down with you. Well, no, no, that's the reason I bring her because I don't want to die alone. No, I'm kidding. No, <laughs> no, uh, <laughs> no that, that's an old that's an old flying joke for as a pilot when we take people. It's like um, we always bring somebody so we don't die alone. Um, no, I actually 
I ride differently with her compared to when I ride by myself. I mean, I still ride fast with her. She loves speed. <laughs> but uh, during turns, I get very cautious. I overthink my turns to make sure because uh, I had a bad I, – I, I went down a long time ago on a big turn uh, pretty damn hard. And ever since then, if I'm riding with her, I'll be I'm easier on the bike. But I do get very protective when people – cars by other bikers or something i do i kind of i get kind of protected knowing that she's on there mm -hmm. i get really protected too because my blow up doll man them rocks dude that'll blow her <laughs> right up dude. it's messed up man i know yours with the and i'm out i'm fresh out of patches to too the bugs in there i, I just it's like a bug <laughs> Well, if you're from the Midwest and Dan, you know what? I was never really protective when I had my ex on the back of the bike. I, I, I don't know. Well, I, I guess it was a little different because my ex, she was, she was pretty gangster too. So she could, uh, she could handle herself. And, um, I never really got real protective. I always just was like, you know what? I know how to ride, you know, and I'm a pretty cautious rider. That doesn't mean, you know, we can't go down of course, but, um, I just always look at it like, you know what? I know what I'm but doing on the bike. As long as she's on the back of the bike with me, we're good. But worrying about others, Danny, I think that's where I'm at is the others, like cagers on their text, you know, texting and stuff like that. Right. I worry about that shit all the time. Uh, I mean, uh, you know what? I, I pay to... attention as much as I can, man. I'm all watching the other drivers and like I'm looking in their windows and like I, I, I kind of tend to notice a little bit of everything it don't mean that something can't happen don't get me wrong you know but, yeah. but it's a game i mean i played every day when i ride it's like who's trying to kill me today and i'm looking and playing a game of chess like who's gonna do it to do it to me today and uh, it's, it's actually fun for me same thing when i fly if an engine goes out i'm always looking prepared to where i'm gonna land uh, i still enjoy the ride right. make it, make it kind of fun in my head but uh, you could be as defensive as possible but it takes one second for something just to to happen and you have no say in what's going to happen so we live in all times so. right tiger tiger asked john and heather have you ever rode the back of uh the dragon in virginia botd store is where i discovered born to ride magazine <laughs> no we did when we were in north carolina we did the blue ridge expressway that was interesting. I didn't do the beautiful. One. Yeah, the, the, I haven't rode in Virginia. That's one place I haven't rode just yet. Is that we're the one going toward Gatlinburg? You know, it might be. I'm, I'm not 100 percent sure. Yeah, Gatlinburg yeah. area is really pretty to ride. Yeah, because they have that house out there, that mansion in Los Chutos. Yes, we're going to Virginia. Yeah, we're going to be point. ride. Yeah, we're going to be some point. I know want to ride, setting us up there for a uh, interview and a shoot for this old mansion that's up there with beautiful roads all around it. So sometimes I'll do like a one tank wonder thing, you know, you can ride here and I'll have like a and b and all the roads around it and we'll do that, you know, and we'll send that in, you know, and it's just good stuff. And we can use it all on the show. That's why you were saying, how do you get your material? We'll have the material, we'll put it together and we'll just do a show about what we did that week. And that week, if we rode, you know, even to like Ozello Trail, you know, or one of those beautiful places. We'll tape it with the GoPro. Like we're going to plan an, air yeah. an airboat ride excursion. Yeah. Now. We'll and go we're going to go try show. that and ride out to the airboats and see how that is. Right. That's what we do. We ride everywhere we go. Mm -hmm. Everything we do, we ride to. We try to. That's yeah. why our bike is so heavy because I got a suitcase. We have a trunk the, on our I got bike, a trunk actually. on my back, if that tells you anything. It's, it's like a eight square foot trunk that extends up like this and i get so much gear in the bike that sometimes i can feel the front tire doing this on my back <laughs> 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 you know? yeah and the pipes <clears throat> straight the bikes as i'm making a turn because the bike's so damn low because of all the weight in it but you know we we ride everywhere and that's what we like to do you know i love just to go ride somewhere and then when we get to film the way there Go eat, film, you know, where we were at, the people that were around there, take some nice pictures. Do you never story. know who you're going to meet yeah. and what story they have. And yeah. what, you never know right. what they've been through. So it's not really written. It's not, not like a uh, white article. We'll be more of a video telling the story. <clears throat> That's well, awesome, man. That's the most interesting. You know, it's, it's, hard, it's hard for us bikers to find a girl that will like ride, ride or die, like ride all day and all night, kind of, you know what I mean? So it's cool that you guys found each other like that. Yes. Oh my God, that, that makes a huge difference. I mean, when I when I found Jess, and uh -huh. I, 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 when I first fell in love, when I asked her, I go, 
hey, do you want to take the car or the bike? This is when I we first met. She goes, always bike. So after that, you know, I'm just, I mean, I was like, okay, I'm in love. <laughs> then, uh, she would ride, I mean, rain, shine, whatever, she'll ride. Uh, but then, of course, since I like flying, too, we ride everywhere. But then uh, weekend getaways are nice to try to fly. But then I contemplate the flying and the riding and stuff all the time. Again, That's my thing. Yeah. Right. Well, you know, we have to ask her. You just got to get what? a bigger plane so you can put your bike in it. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Drag it back. What, ma <laughs> what makes, uh, uh, you know, <laughs> women so special in what we do? Because they're a different breed than a regular uh, woman out there, citizen, as me and Danny and Carlos would call it. They well, got that you, right. Well, I, I mean, and they do have bigger hearts. Like, for instance, what Jess did today, without saying anything to me, we're going to go get breakfast for Mother's Day with our daughter. And she says, let's stop by the grocery store. I was like, for what? And she didn't say it. She just bought some roses. And I'm like, okay, what's this for? We go to the diner. She hands all the waitresses and the owner, all the women, roses for Mother's Day. Oh. Uh, you know, it, it's just the heart that they have. I noticed it, they're, it's a different breed, man. Uh, mm -hmm. right, around uh, right around Thanksgiving, we had a friend of ours that was in need. And she was really upset because she didn't have enough money to be able to have a Thanksgiving dinner for her family and have a little bit left for Christmas. So the first thing that Heather did was John, let's go shopping. We grabbed that yep. car, you know, what we had, and we gave, we bought her what we could. It was enough for Thanksgiving for her and her kids and um, enough that she could have some Christmas, you know, a turkey and that stuff that's frozen that she could have until then. And we love doing it. Yeah. That's awesome. It. Her idea. That's, that's what this is about, man. Love and, that's what, and that's what yeah. I like people seeing, you know, in the comment section and people seeing like just, you know, regular people, but with big hearts uh, compared mm -hmm. to what people really think. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think that epitomizes uh, what actually what an in, you know, that, you know, clubbers have, you know, good hearts and stuff, but, you know, in the, the independent riders that really make up this lifestyle are really something special. They look at life different and they truly ride their asses off. And I know Danny's brought that up before. Uh, but as independents, what kind of stuff do you look forward to? Is it just the freedom? Is it just taking it to the edge, jumping off, uh, mm -hmm. riding where you want? That's it right All there. All of that. That's it right there. Not yeah, I was going to say all of it. All of it. <laughs> all, of it. Yeah. all of the above, but especially not being told that I can't ride somewhere. You know? Right. Because, you know, you can't ride there. That area is too black and white. Oh, no, that area is too red and white. No, no, no. I'm independent. I know them all. I ride through and I say hi to everybody. You know, I will. No. Are, I'll ride with them. I, I just we like care. everybody. I like everybody. I like to meet everybody, and I like to be able to be independent because I can do that. If I'm in an MC or like a, even a just a club that's really you know like with the tight members, it's hard to be able to go and do that in certain areas. In certain areas, that we is. We don't do that wherever we want. And <laughs> oh yeah, and you yeah. got to wear. You can't wear certain things. You can't talk to certain old friends you sometimes. Go in certain venues, exactly. Nope. Here we can that. go anywhere. We can do anything, and we can see anybody. That's true. Mm -hmm. And we don't have any problem. Well, and we don't have to answer to anyone. And yeah. that's the best part of it. I have to watch my back every five minutes. Well, and you, and you can go to more. You can go to more events. I mean, that's the whole thing. You can go to any event. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And have fun and just enjoy the what you feel right riding in the in the bike you feel nature you can smell the smells uh it just i don't know that's what i love about it all my senses are always just heightened on the Big bike time. in general and he oh. don't have much sense so at all, <laughs> at all. <laughs> that's for sure <laughs> this, this is the only two cents i have cervezas and tacos that's it <laughs> <laughs> i'm down with the tacos Damn right. So how, oh, you know what? Well, I'll take the Sylvester too. <laughs> <laughs> One of the last questions I have is how have you dealt with the success of your show? When you're out and about, people coming up to you, how have you dealt with that? Well, oh, God. <laughs> dealt with it good, but you know, I, we're it, talking it, to you. It's <laughs> no, cool, man. I didn't deal with it good at all. 
It's exciting. We love it. I just think it's cool that somebody else watches what I, what I'm doing, what, like the content that I'm creating because we're independent. Right. Creators. And it just feels cool to have somebody else appreciate something that we love to do and appreciate you know? our art and our work. Yeah, you know, because you know, I work hard to get like the pictures that look good, and get the lighting right, and it's nice when somebody can really appreciate you know the job that I do, and I don't charge anything. I, I don't, you know, I have to have a regular job to pay my bills, you know. But you know, I just I, I love to be able to do it. I just it's just the passion that's involved with it. And I I love doing what I do, and I enjoy it. And you know, and of course, anything that makes John happy makes me happy because I like what well, seeing him happy. So damn right. Yeah, you know, I back him. You I'm guys are about. awesome. Yeah. Well, thank you, Dan. <laughs> they are, ain't they? You're jealous. They man. really are, man. I, I am a little bit. I am a little bit. You're a blessed no, man, John. God bless you, brother. You're <laughs> still trying to deal with all the stuff when you go out and about, and I'm sure Wild on Twos does too. It's a different lifestyle that we have to live as creators and stuff. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, love, I love meeting people. <laughs> I love the fact that when I get a message from somebody that I've inspired them or I've helped them throughout the day or I've made them yeah. feel about themselves, mm -hmm. that makes me feel good. You know, it right. Makes Feel really good yeah. for myself and it, it, it makes me feel better about anything that might have been not not going well that yeah. day yeah it makes somebody happy. right it's just yeah, I want, it's, I mean, you I know it, it's cool but it's such a weird experience for me because i've lived i've lived a certain type of life my whole life so it's it's um, I, I really need to work on getting used to you know this random people walking up like hey what's up because Normally, my defense goes up like, what's up? Exactly. you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and it's like, like you know, you're up, like yeah, this. yeah, it's it's well, I mean, I, I like uh, something like that, yeah. There's a, lot of, there's a lot of viewers actually don't ride motorcycles, and I like hearing the stories of by yep. listening to us that they tried and want to ride motorcycles and mm -hmm. get that's how we grow the community to so it doesn't die off. Yeah. Um, so that's my goal right. to get more people riding on motorcycles and uh, keep the tradition. So, you know, the newer traditions and mixed with some old ones alive to a point, uh, but keep growing, uh, not see it die off. And because the average age, yeah, it might be in the 40s. And of course, bikes are more expensive now. I mean, there's cheap, there's great cheap bikes out there. Great mm -hmm. cheap bikes. You don't need a Harley, uh, but right. it is really expensive. It's easier to get a rat bike, you know, uh, get that going or a little. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. The, 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 one of the really neat things that we love to do is just to get with an old timer yeah. and hear some yeah. stories. Yeah. Because if you really get to hear, I love that. Yeah, how it really was, old school was back in the, 70s. Back in the day, and, and yeah. you really know how tradition was, and right. you know how the life really was, and what MC life was, and, and, and what it was like, and compared to what's going right. on nowadays. You know what what the difference was. Yeah, yeah. I like hearing their. I met I met an old biker ride. that I used to work with. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Carlos. Oh no, sorry about that. No, <clears> I was. I like I like when they tell me the tips of not just stories, but of their travels, and they'll tell you a million tips that I didn't even think of mm -hmm. of riding and make my trip much better and enjoyable compared to before. Cool Have you guys ever met uh, Panhead Billy? Can't say that I. What's that name name again? sounds familiar. What's the name of Pan, Panhead Billy. No, I mean, we know a, a, a Panhead Frank. Okay, no. so look him, look him up. You can you can Google Panhead Billy, uh, Bill, Billy Barrows, I think, or something like that. Um, he's he's an old dude, man, and he's old gray beard. And you guys saying that reminded me of it. So, like, one day <clears throat> I was at Walmart in my local area, and I, I, I was going, I was walking into Walmart and I see this old panhead sitting there and it's got bags strapped to it. I mean, it just looked all ugly, you know, uh, oil covered everywhere. And I'm looking at that and I'm like, man, that's a cool bike, man. You know, yeah. and, and my ex, so a lady, she's like, I don't know, it's kind of ugly. And I'm like, no, nah, that's a brother that's been on the road for a while, man. That's freaking cool, you know? Yeah. So we went inside, I come back out. And dude's sitting there trying to pour some oil on his bike, but you know he was he had some tools out and stuff. So I walked over by him and I said, "Hey man, you all right? You know you, you need a hand or anything?" And he goes, "Ah, oh, you know uh, 
I'm just putting some some oil in it, you know. And he's like, you know, I, I only had enough money to to get uh, you know, get a court for right now, and that should get me to Milwaukee. I'm going to the rally, and and I'm like, hey, listen, man, I'm like, here's twenty bucks, you know. I threw him twenty bucks, and I'm like, go grab some oil if you need it, or you know, if you need more money, let me know, man. And I'm like, if you need a place to crash for the night, you know, or you know, work on your scoop, man. I'm like, come over to my crib. You know, I got a, I got a whole shop, you know, and I'm like, you're more than welcome to stay at dinner, whatever. Right. So I start talking with the guy and it turns out it was like 19, it was like 1970 something. His wife left him and he had this pan head in his garage and it was an old basket case. And he put this pan head together and he took whatever he could. He loaded up his, his bike as, as good as possible. And he left his house that day and he never went back since 1970 something. He's been on he's been road on that old hardtail panhead, just just riding, man, living life. And I'm like, dude, I, I mean, I was like, I, I, I was starstruck, and I don't get starstruck. I've been around you know, very famous movie stars and rappers and everything in my security days. And this guy, this guy, I was just like, uh, <laughs> you know, like he was just, he was such a cool dude, man. He was just an awesome dude. And so like, he rides to like all the different events mm -hmm. and uh, he'll actually like work the events. Like Harley will, will pay him to, you know, set up camps and, and do whatever, you know, and, and that's what yeah. he does, man. That's how he makes a little bit of, you know, a little bit of bread for the road to get him to the next state you know it's it's so cool man gun, gun gun powder if you ever want to come on the show just get a hold of me on instagram you can come on man i'll get you scheduled in Who uh, is it? Gun, powder. gunpowder nitro but wild on to oh, my buddy over there yeah start our final thoughts on everything man no, I just, this is what I mean. I love listening to, especially a great couple like this, and uh, it makes people smile. Just seeing them happy, talking about what they what they do, how much they love doing it, um, helping each other out. I mean, that's just awesome. There's not more much more you can say than that. I mean, that just embodies an independent writer. Thank you. Rock it. it does, and by uh, you know, it does. Uh, Danny, what's your final thoughts, man? Before I hand it over to John and Heather. Um, well, first I want to say, John and Heather, thank you for coming on the show. We appreciate you. Um, it was a, it was an honor talking to you guys. You guys are living life. I admire you. Um, I, I I'm living through you right now. <laughs> it's great what you guys are doing and, uh, keep doing your thing, man. Much love and respect. Watch John. Well, John and Heather, you get to take over the show. You get to say whatever you want to say. You're on now. Go for it. Well, I just want to say, everybody, you know, keep the shiny side up and rub, rub the side, side down. down. You know, that's we, we kind of live by that, you know, because you just want to keep the shiny side up. Be happy, be nice, ride with your buddies, live life to its fullest, and pay it forward when you can. You Always. Know, keep that rubber side down, which means, you know, you don't want to go out there too trash to be on the road. I, I, I'm a really firm believer that, you know, I, everybody ride needs safe. a party. But you need to ride safe. Your choice of helmets, I don't even get into that, you know, but you need to ride safe. Pay it forward. Love your brother. Love your sister. You know, um, one of these days you might need help. You so know, always make sure that you offer to help others. Yeah, don't burn your bridges, man. Always, always, you know, help others. Always, you know, love your friend next to you because, like I said, that might be the last time you see your brother. This happened to us just a few weeks ago. We lost a friend to a motorcycle accident. Out of the blue, man, Patty, you know? Yeah, so you never know. You never know as the last time. Sorry for your loss, guys. Thank you, brother. I appreciate yes, it. exactly. You know, and we're hopefully Gary, your husband's going to make it out because he's still in ICU. But, you know, it's just you have to love that person you're with because you don't know the last time you're going to see him. Life and is too short. Life is meant to be lived, so you better enjoy life and live it. Enjoy motorcycles because motorcycles are fun. It's exciting mm -hmm. and enjoy the smells, enjoy the sights, enjoy everything oh, yeah. that you can do, you can see, you can taste, you can smell. I mean, motorcycles are just it, it is a way of life. It really is. <laughs> 100. 100. Man, right on. 
All right, guys, but I just want to say, make sure everybody hit that like, hit the subscribe to all our channels. If you're not subscribed, go check out uh, John and Heather's channel, Hollywoods, Danny Delos, and myself. And uh, much love and respect to everybody. Rock Thank on, man. Up, Rock on. Thank you. We appreciate having you guys Thanks, on the guys. show. You know, Thank I'm you an after you guys. Uh, but anyway, that's the show, guys. We'll talk to you later. Rock on.